God bless you mamas this morning. Now we're going to a topic, even though it's Mother's Day, we started something last week, being taught the truth. And we talked about salvation by the truth. And now on this Mother's Day, there comes a warning. You know, mama, she warns you about things. She told you not to be out there running around doing that crazy stuff. Then when she got down to jailhouse that Saturday night, she said, I told you so, didn't I? (laughs) So, uh, mama, God bless all of our mothers. And here's the warning. The second thing as we talk about being taught the truth is slipping from the truth. Now, number one, salvation by the truth. Jesus is the truth. He said without apology in John 14, 6, when Thomas had responded, when Jesus said, you know, that's the famous passage of scripture there in John 14. In my father's house, many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And Thomas chirped up there and said, wait a minute, Jesus, we don't know where you're going. And if we don't know where you're going, then how can we ever know the way? And then the famous response from the Lord, verse six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so we believe that we are saved by the truth. Jesus is that ultimate truth the fullness of truth, the completeness of truth, the eternality of truth. He's the personification, the embodiment of truth is Jesus. Everybody looking for truth, everybody wanting to know the truth, but he said in John 8, uh, 28, uh, you'll know the truth, Uh, John 8, 32, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Don't you like freedom? Everybody likes freedom, everybody likes liberty, free from bondage, free from chains, free from enslavement, free from manipulation, free from all the harassment of this world and the flesh and the devil and all. There's nothing like freedom and being freed from sin, freed into the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Freedom, I dare say, is one of the most precious words in the human language. You've got mama on this Mother's Day, but then you've got love, you've got joy, you've got peace, you've got a lot of good words that just strike feelings of contentment and peace in your heart. But when you talk about freedom, real freedom, uh, freedom has to be gauged or channeled with knowledge and judgment, understanding, understand that. Just anarchy and doing whatever you want to do, that's not certainly far from what the Bible's talking about when it's talking about freedom and liberty. But of course, being free from harassment, being free from manipulation, being freed from religion, being freed from pride, being freed from all self-centeredness, being freed from self-indulgence, being free from a spirit that just wants to be uh, you know, a non-controlled or to go up and fall to addictions and other things. Freed from sin, freed into the Lord Jesus. So salvation by the truth and now slipping from the truth. We do not want that to happen to anyone. So our key verse last week, Psalms 25, 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me. So there's where we're getting this topic, being taught the truth. Now, Galatians chapter three in your Bibles, if you want to look at that, fine, and I hope you will if you have a copy of the word of God, but they've got it right there on the screens for us. Galatians chapter three, verse one, oh foolish Galatians, look at that. Who has bewitched you? See that word, bewitched. Am I not wrong? I never did really like it all that good, but I think when I was a kid, wasn't there a television show called Bewitched? How many of you watched it? Okay, a lot of you in here watched it. <laughs> uh, bewitched, that's an interesting word. It, 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 if you study it, listen carefully. It has to do with slander. Much talking and the talking by some seducing spirit is designed to bring the person back into the realm of evil or back into the kingdom of the world and the flesh and the devil. Did you hear that? 
And it, it has to do in the original language with mis, a deliberate misleading by charming means. I remember if Luther remembers it, and I don't know, I, Luther's the only one I remember that was there that Sunday evening over at the old church years ago when a big old snake had a, had a bird in its mouth. Do you remember that, Luther? I can only remember Luther. Was any of the rest of y'all standing down there when that snake had that bird in its mouth? And we stood there and watched that just for a few minutes and I couldn't figure how, why in the world didn't that little bird back out from there and fly away? But I heard Granny and others talk about charmed. That old snake would just sliver up there, you know, just, that, that tongue rolled out in them little old beady eyes. Satan's a serpent. And that little precious thing just, it was, we stood there and watched it a little bit. It was like it was sticking its head in that thing's mouth. And I'm standing there and I'm a hard, pull back, get out of there and fly away. Do you remember that, Luther? Well, I just wanted to verify you. Some of you might have thought I was making this story up, but I, I'm not. I couldn't stand it any longer. You know what I did? I just reached out and got the bird and pulled him out. <laughs> Little bird laid there for about three seconds. I think he flew away. Now, the serpent went on back in where its little old place was. But I'm so thankful that there was a hand invisible reached down from glory one day when my heart was charmed by the God of this world and he was devouring me. And I was half in and half out. And about that time, I was sliding down that thing's goozle. And Jesus reached way down in there, got me in the grip of grace, pulled me out, and set me free from that varmint. You ought to glorify him for that on this Mother's Day. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Got saved by the amazing grace of God. Now, don't, just because as a little bird we got freed, Jesus destroyed Satan's kingdom with an eternal blow upon the resurrection. He bruised his head. And one day Satan will be bound and then burned from the pit to the, to the lake of fire. But until then, as a roaring lion, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. In other words, that rascal is still slithering around. Now, whether you believe it or not, whether I believe it or not, that's irrelevant. And if he could ever deceive me or con me into thinking that he does not exist, then he knows and so happy that I don't know that he still has subtle powers and seducing spirits and doctrines of devils to take me back into that state of bewitchment to where I'm charmed. And I listen to rhetoric and I view things and I'm influenced by things and I, like the Galatians, if I'm not careful, can become bewitched. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Now get chapter four, verse 16 and 17. They got angry at Paul because he was trying to, to help them, trying to warn them, trying to straighten them out. And so they became friendly and cozy with deceivers and became antagonistic toward the very bearer of the gospel, the apostle Paul, and therefore the un, uh, unaffected gospel of the Son of God, unaffected by the error of man. Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Man, the truth made you free, and the truth will keep you free. But if you stray from the truth, due to the seduction of other forces, then we are away from the truth. 
and opposite truth is lies. And Jesus said in the same scriptures that he was talking about freedom in, in John 8 and in John 10, 